You want to be a doctor? Yeah, I want to be a doctor. You don't want to be a mathematician? Oh no. <laughs> Hopefully after interview, this interview yeah, you I'll know understand right? a bit more about it. Yeah. yeah. During college, you went to mainland China and then you went to America for your pursuit of your academic career. Mm -hmm. So during those times or b even before that, what inspired your passion for mathematics? Very good question. Uh, I actually grew up in China. At that time, I wasn't really particularly interested in mathematics, so you know, you were asking me. I think a lot of Form 2s nowadays would agree with you. Yes, um, so it was my least favorite subject, and uh, I was all set to declare my major in physics. You know, we have to pass a physical to see whether you have any problem, right? And uh, uh, so they discover which to my surprise that um, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, colorblind. Oh. So I'm colorblind. When I, you know, the time I went to university, the only major in that university I could declare was mathematics. So I end up being a mathematician. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. You know, of course, I was very disappointed in the beginning, but after my graduation, uh, getting my PhD, I realized actually math was a really good profession to be in. So I was quite happy that I thought I was lucky. Professor Wang was the first academic I interviewed. I was a little nervous at first as I wanted to be a doctor most of all. I wasn't quite sure what I could take away from this math-related conversation. Mathematics is a very interesting subject because not only do you have the core mathematics in and of itself, it branches mm -hmm. out into a lot of other subjects like physics, chemistry, all of those require some form of mathematics. Yeah. In fact, in almost every field, take one example, you think lawyers. In the U.S., to get into law school, you actually have to take an exam called the LSAT. And if you look at that uh, exam, it's all mathematics because it also helps with their logical thinking. Exactly, because when you prepare a case in a, to a court, you have to be very, very logical. I saw more than just math in the projects that he was involved in. And it was here that I began to understand why he said, math is everywhere. You had a lot of ongoing projects when I looked through your HKUST profile. Some of them weren't about mathematics, they were about uh, medical or, or chemistry or things like that. And that's all because you, can't, you have that kind of logical thinking or mathematics. Yeah, so this is, uh, again, uh, I, I don't know chemistry. Okay? I'm not a chemist, I'm not a doctor, I, I'm not trained in medical profession. But nowadays, every field uh, can use a lot of data analysis. Right? That's why you see many mathematicians, computer scientists in the field of chemistry, in the field of you know, finance, in the field of medicine, simply because there is a tremendous need to understand data. But actually it's more than that. For many fields, it's not just the data itself, but also the way uh, things can be modeled. And when you build model, that's mathematics. Right? So that's why math is everywhere. In the robotics lab of HKUST, Professor Wang introduced me to a robot arm that was capable of turning the pages of a book. I also tried controlling a drone with gestures. He believed that humans should adapt to the changes in the job market due to artificial intelligence However, he had no real concern that artificial intelligence would swoop in and replace humans in their jobs. Uh, machine learning is a general characterization that you use algorithm to figure out the intrinsic relationship between those data. So there are all kinds of uh, you know, uh, techniques uh, you can 
you can use sometimes a hybrid. You know, you use different models, then you pick, you know, it's like a voting system. I have uh, five different models, okay? okay? And I get five different results, and then I have a vote. Then you can pick the best you, one. Uh, you fun. can say three uh, models agree with certain things, and I pick that decision. Uh. Speaking of you know innovation and things like that, there has been one major one for the government, and that is the Greater Bay Area mm -hmm. development. So, what would be your take on that? You know, take one example of DJI, the drone company. Okay, uh, the whole technology is developed by students, faculty at HKUST. Okay, but the market is actually all over the world and uh, the whole production you know because the supply chain is all in Shenzhen okay so this integration just opens up a whole uh, front of new opportunities for innovation and the researchers for Hong Kong to collaborate with a larger number of uh, uh, researchers you know in mainland China Hong Kong is relatively small Right, we have seven million people. We don't have a big market. Okay, so uh, on its own, I mean, Hong Kong has many things to offer, for sure. Okay, but it lacks the whole infrastructure that link Hong Kong to the rest of the world, especially to China. Over the years, do do you think that HKUST will take measures or steps to? enhance its research activities, perhaps make some investment of its own into the Greater Bay Area policy, or enhance the university's profile, national profile or national presence? Well, of course. I mean, this is all we do here. In fact, it's already started. You know, uh, last September, we opened the campus in Guangzhou, HKUSD Guangzhou. Okay? Wow. And uh, all the faculties are recruited using exactly the same standard as HKUST in Clearwater Bay. So that's already a you know, big, big step uh, in terms of integrating into the Greater Bay Area. Of course, we plan to do more. Uh, we have several platforms in Shenzhen uh, you know, for R&D, and uh, there are additional uh, plans here to hire a number of world-class faculty members. We want to recruit the best and brightest into HKUST. What's your opinion on the Hong Kong youth's role in the future of the development of the Greater Bay Area? It is uh, obviously a high priority for the development of uh, Greater Bay Area, for the growth of Greater Bay Area to have the buying of the youth from Hong Kong, like you, okay? I think ultimately, the more connections we have, the more people going to Greater Bay Area from Hong Kong to see the development, and the more people from mainland, especially from the Greater Bay Area, to come to see Hong Kong, I think, and the more interaction among the youth groups will certainly play a major role, and I think that is beginning to happen. I feel like he was a very smart person, first of all, as a mathematician. And he also seemed very kind and nice to all of his students. And if I were a student here, I would really enjoy being taught by Mr. Wong. He's only 14, right? He has been able to ask a very uh, relevant and insightful questions. I'm actually really impressed. But I think he needs to loosen up a little bit. Uh, I learned that it's very important to keep an open mind, especially regarding innovations in technology and things like that. When we look at the college uh, admission, the top students always go to medical school, which I, I have no problem with it. But I do think there are so many other opportunities out there. People should have a more broader horizon to see you know, what is the future. If I have to give some advice to the young people, I think they need to maintain an open mind and they need to have always 
have an international perspective.